A lot of indie developers tend to make games that look like this, but they don't have to. Understanding lighting can be a game changer in defining the look and feel of a game when you treat every frame like a painting. Hi, I'm Cole. I have nothing qualifying me to say anything, but I'm going to talk at you for a few minutes about lighting and hope that it's at least alright. Let's back up for a second and talk about film. Most filmmakers have figured out in a visual medium you should always show, not tell. Why waste your audience's time hitting them with paragraphs of text when I can hit you with one image that conveys the story in seconds while remaining impactful? However, now how you show your subject is the most important component in conveying your story. So you may have the most tragic, impactful scene, but showing that tragic scene take place in a well-lit, overly complicated and distracting room is going to take away from what you're trying to really say. It's not going to hit you as hard as a scene that's dramatically lit and draws your attention to what matters. Typically. But what does it look like to dramatically light something? Well, let's back up again. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite place? How would you describe home? What's your favorite color? Chances are I evoked some sort of imagery in your mind, so when I ask what does it look like to dramatically light something, we want to do the inverse of what just happened. I want to show imagery that evokes a question. What's on that phone? Well, first thing you see the phone before you ask anything. So to direct your attention, I'm going to make the brightest object in our scene the phone. I'm going to start by removing the point light I had on the ceiling of the room and replace the point light above the phone with two spotlights to create a more sharpened and directed light that casts shadows along the floor and the walls that direct you towards the phone. I'm going to refer to these spotlights in the phone itself as our key light as they illuminate our subject. I'm going to set these to be hard shadowed as well in contrast to the softer shadows from our directional light outside as this is a harsh, bright light. Next, I'm going to angle our directional light differently so that the shadows are more angled towards the phone's general direction. Having lines in your scene that direct the viewer's eye is a technique I actually learned in drawing, but can be applied to 3D geometry as well. And your shadows should be treated in the same way as any of your other geometry. Always consider your geometry's purpose. Just like in storytelling, keeping any sort of unnecessary details detracts from your overall picture. Okay, now I've got you looking at the phone, but how do I want you to feel about it? Questioning, intrigued, maybe even a little concerned? We can achieve this by adding some fill lights. Fill lights are used to fill in the shadows left by our key lights. You don't always need fill lights, especially if you want to leave more of your subject in shadow. By keeping things in the dark, we keep the player in the dark, making them feel questioning or unnerved. So we're going to make my fill lights here very dim, but just bright enough to highlight some of the geometry to tell us about our environment and to resemble as if the light is bouncing in the scene like in real life. Finally, to reinforce the power of our phone's light, I'm going to use what's called backlight on the plant sitting on the sill. This extra light really highlights the power of our phone's light by emulating it reaching the plant in the cell as well as creates a contrast from the outside world and what's going on inside and draws our eye into the scene. These three types of light are what make up what's called the three-point lighting system, a key to light our subject, a fill to soften the key's shadowing, and a backlight to pop our subject from the background. This is the most simple and commonly used lighting system across all mediums as it's tried and tested and just works. As you can see in the scene I've made, I didn't necessarily follow this exact structure. I didn't use a backlight on our subject, but instead used it to help distinguish the foreground from the background of our scene and draw our attention to the background. Don't be afraid to play around. The three-point lighting system is not the end-all be-all of lighting, not even close. But it's a great jumping off point to start bringing your scenes to life, but it's up to you to tell your story. Don't feel like you need to stick to what's worked before. The horror movie Midsommar was one of my favorite movies that came out last year and is also one of the most unsettling, but it takes place almost entirely in brightly lit, big open fields. Not what you would typically think of for a horror movie, much less a movie about unraveling a mystery and relationships. Yet, its visuals and story have sat with me since I watched it and it's been months. Because there isn't some magical formula, tradition, or practice that tells stories. You do. So, experiment, watch the movies, and stay lit. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel or go follow me on Twitter as well as wishlist my game Jelly Brawl on Steam. That really helps. Otherwise, I'll see you next time when I tell you how to handcraft a nuclear reactor. Love you. Bye.